Jesse Eisenberg is a top tier actor, a playwright, and a patron of numerous issue specific charities, including those organizations that work to destigmatize mental health and anxiety, as well as networks that encourage creativity in the arts as a medium for character development. We are so excited to have Jesse join us tonight as a role model for vulnerability, curiosity, and acceptance. Please join us as we welcome Jesse Eisenberg. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Hi. There are four microphones here, so I'm going to... I'm going to choose this one. Do I, yeah, okay. Um, hi, thank you so much for having me here. That sounded sincere. Um, I, um, I've never uh, given a speech in my life, except when I was running for treasurer in seventh grade. So, um, and I lost, so I hope this one goes better. Um, I, uh, I, I wrote a, a kind of a speech with bullet points. I'm, I'm probably not your hero, but thank you. Um, okay, okay, all right. Uh, thank you. I'm hearing like different heckles, but of different varieties. So that's nice. Um, I want to, um, I, I, I wasn't sure what to say. I didn't want to like give any advice. I'm usually suspicious of anybody who's trying to give me advice. So I just wanted to talk about something that happened to me that I think you guys can probably relate to because we are probably very similar, although I'm older than you, but otherwise we're similar. Um, so um, I'm looking at all these like flags around the room. Um, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with flags. Actually, my favorite is Macedonia. Um, maybe there's somebody here. Um, and I have a, I have a three-year-old baby, um, and um, I'm trying to teach him the flags as well. His favorite is Botswana. Botswana is a blue flag with a black stripe in it. And when I asked him, he's three, when I asked my baby, why, why do you like Botswana? He said, because it's blue with a black stripe in it. Um, and I, I, wanted to, I wanted him to memorize the flags. So I bought these like flash cards, which is like, um, you know, just like an index card with one side has the uh, flag and the other side has the name of the country. And um, a year ago, I caught him playing with the flags by himself and I walked in and he had eaten Botswana. And um, I said, I said why, why did you eat that, that flag? He said, because it's my favorite. Um, so it's obviously not a great explanation for eating a flashcard, but I liked his enthusiasm. But um, anyway, the reason I bring this up uh, is because um, the thing that I've come to value the most in the world, the thing that I think about the most is, is um, trying to understand people who are different than me, to meet people from other places, to meet people who have different life experience and to try to kind of understand what their life is. Um, and that's why it was so important for me to teach my son these flags. I wanted him to appreciate the broader world in the way I've come to as an adult. Um, because my favorite thing to do is to understand other parts of the world. It's both really fascinating and it makes me sensitive to the plight of other people. Um, it's probably why I'm an actor. I love, um, I love traveling to unexplored places, staying with local people. I love reading the history of other countries. Um, the next thing I'm actually doing is I'm acting in a TV show that I wrote to take place in Bosnia, in southern Europe. Um, and I've been trying to convince like the New York City film crew to not be nervous to travel over there. Um, but um, I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always so interested in other cultures. I used to be kind of a recluse. I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey, and I was a, uh, well, yes, yes, I'm, I'm surprised it's just that, that few of you. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, I was always like very afraid of getting outside of my comfort zone. And um, then when I was 18 years old, I started to form a relationship with um, like an aunt of mine. She was 90 years old. Um, her name was Doris. I was 18 years old and she was 90 and every Thursday I would go to her house for like three hours. Sorry? Oh, I'm cute? Okay, thanks. Thanks. I was, well, I'm sure my 90-year-old aunt would appreciate that because she said the same thing. Um, anyway, um, we would talk about my my aunt and I would talk about her life. She was born in Poland. She left during World War I. Um, she grew up in the tenements of the Lower East Side in New York. And the more she talked about her life, uh, the more I started to value my connection to my own past. Like, because I always thought of myself as disconnected. I thought of myself as like a kind of boring person who was a middle class 
kid from New Jersey, my parents were teachers, I went to like a good school. It all seemed very normal and boring to me, but when I was sitting with my Aunt Doris, who was 90, who was born in Poland, it made me realize that I'm actually connected to something bigger than myself. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was connected to Poland, I was connected to the Lower East Side tenements and World War I and all this other stuff that I never associated with myself. And when I started learning about my own self and my own history, it made me interested in other people's history because I felt like a person who was like part of the world. I felt like it gave me license to talk to other people, to ask them where they're from, since I finally knew where I was from. And living in New York City became this like amazing opportunity to not hide from people, but meet people from other places. Um, and I started doing like little things to change my behavior. I changed my major in college to anthropology, uh, which is, you know, from, from drama, which was, you know, in anthropology is the study of other cultures. I started eating at like the little Puerto Rican restaurant instead of the Starbucks down the block. I would read world news, not just local news. Um, the first vacation I went on as an adult was to uh, Venezuela, where I stayed with this like indigenous tribe in the Orinoco Delta. And it was weird because like the more I connected to my Jewish roots, the more I felt connected to like other, other cultures. It's paradoxical, but it made sense to me. Um, and I also started to deepen my connection to my family's history. I found my second cousin who was this, um, it was an older woman who was living in Poland. She was the lone survivor in my family of World War II. I'm sure you guys have similar histories. Um, she was hidden in a basement for five years during the war and I stayed with her for two weeks. Um, and the greater connect connection to my past uh, the greater connection I had to other people's pasts. Um, I'm currently writing a movie script with my friend Jim, who's a Haitian immigrant, and we're writing about his life. What's that? Jim? You're happy about that name, Jim? Okay. You know, it's a, ve it's a very, very common name. Um, anyway, in writing, this, in writing this project with my friend who's you know, born and raised in Haiti, the more we talked, the more we realized that we actually had very similar cultural experiences. Um, because really everybody's story has some similarities, even if you look completely differently. And that's why I really liked coming here and meeting you guys, because it doesn't just make me feel like I'm connecting with, you know, 5,000 similar people, but it makes me feel like I'm connecting to the whole world. Um, so uh, I wanted to thank you so much uh, for having me here. I hope you guys are having a good time. I don't know who is taking home the Macedonia flag, but I would like it to be me. And um, thank you so much. I hope you have a great weekend.